So let's create an Aurora database. So I'll click on create database. And Aurora is not in the free tier. So if you don't want to use Aurora, then please, please, please don't do this tutorial. Um, so Amazon Aurora is not going to be in the free tier. I'm going to click on it though. And I'm going to say, you can either get MySQL 5.6 compatible or 5.7 or Postgres. So I'll use 5.6 just to show you that there is an Aurora option uh, that will be available for you, but you can choose whatever. And maybe in the future, these will be also available for Aurora serverless, such as Postgres, because I know right now it's in beta. All right, click on next. And now we have to specify the DB details. So we can either say provisions, and that means that our instance, we have to say the size of it. So we can say whatever, uh, all the way from T2 small, all the way to dbr 416 x large. So you have a lot of range available for you. Then you can say, I also want to have provision with Aurora parallel query enabled. So it's not something I've mentioned before, but it's like a way to improve your query performance. Or you can choose serverless. And in serverless, as you can see, you don't get to choose the instance type. In provision, you do, but in serverless, you don't. So I'll choose provisions and I'll choose DB T2 small. You can also create replica in different AZ and I'll just say, yes, this is for multi AZ. Now you can also uh, define uh, so the DB name. So I'll say my aura DB, the master username is still going to be Stefan. The password is still going to be password. So I'll just do that. Then I'll scroll down and click on next. Now we get to advanced settings. So we can choose again, the VPC, the subnet, whether or not you want your instance to be publicly accessible. Uh, any preference for the AZ, but I'm fine. Whereas to create a new security group or choose an existing one. Now for the DB cluster identifier, I will just choose uh, my DB, my Aurora DB. Uh, the database name, I won't specify one, or I can just specify and name it Aurora, for example. Uh, the port is going to be 3306, and then you have the parameter groups. Everything is the same. We can enable encryption automatically. We can enable failover. Uh, so this is basically when your uh, instance master dies, you can say whether you prefer any tier to take over, but I won't specify anything right now. You set up the backup, so how long you want your data to be retained. Backtrack, which allows you to go back in time without the need to restore from backup. So it's going to be a really cool feature, but I'll just keep it disabled for now. And whether or not you want enhanced monitoring, so this time we'll say yes, enable it, please. You can audit, uh, export logs, you can enable maintenance, and deletion protection, which basically prevents you from deleting the database accidentally. I'll just disable it for now. Now you click on create database. And here we go, just like you basically created an RDS database, here you just create an Aurora. So very, very simple to have Aurora. You basically gonna go back to your databases and here you can see that you have uh, some reader and some regional databases. So it's creating some stuff for you already in the backend. And so it's the exact same process. And then I could connect to it using my SQL client. It's going to be exactly the same thing, but in the back end, it actually works quite differently. And that's what makes Aurora very, very special. So if you do run applications in production, give it a go. You may be surprised by how good it is and how cheap it is compared to maybe an RDS in the end. So my Aurora DB is still being created, but as we can see now, one instance was designated as a writer whereas the other instance get designated as a reader. So it's a cool thing. As I said, there's going to be a writer endpoint and a reader endpoint. So let me wait a little bit more until everything will be available. Okay, so my cluster has finally been done. So I'm going to click on my Aurora DB. And in there, I'm going to see that in connectivity, I have two endpoints. As you can see, there is a writer endpoint and a reader endpoint. And so the endpoint name is this whole thing and it contains cluster. And this is a reader endpoint. So you see cluster minus RO. So that's for read only. So the idea is that I will connect to this to write and I will connect to this to read. But I could also if I wanted to click on this single DB and get the endpoint just for that DB as well. And this one just for the reader. But I don't recommend you doing this because in case that reader goes away or that writer changes, then you won't be able to connect to the right database. So in Aurora, I want to be super, super uh, clear about this you have to connect to a writer endpoint to write and you have to connect to a reader endpoint to read. I mean, to me, this is the best way and the exam will ask you about it. Now we can just do a few other things. How about we set up auto scaling? For this, we could go to actions and in there you can see you can add a reader if you wanted to. So if you wanted to manually scale uh, your readers or you could add an auto scaling policy and in there you could say my uh, demo policy and this is going to be for scaling. 
And so you could maybe scale on the average CPU utilization of your Aura replicas and say, well, I want my target CPU utilization to be 60%, and this is how I want to scale. You could set up some additional configuration policy around scaling the cooldown period and the scale out cooldown, cooldown period, just like an ASG in the end. And then you can say what's the minimum capacity and the maximum capacity. So you can have at least one Aura replica, obviously, a minimum, and up to 15 Aura replicas total. I click on Add Policy. And here we go. I basically now have auto scaling uh, for my Aurora cluster, which is, I think, very, very awesome. So it's just that easy. I think Aurora is a great piece of technology and a great offering from Amazon. So have a go, try it out. But you know everything you need to know now for the exam. So see you in the next lecture.